today's lecture we will start with isomorphism of graphs. Now, we have already seen that a graph G is an ordered pair of sets V and E, where V is called the set of vertices. and E the set of edges. Now, we have also seen what we mean by vertices and edges. Roughly speaking, V contains some points and E contains pair of those points not necessarily all the pairs and each pair corresponds to an edge and it may so happen that there may be repetition of these pairs. So, that within two uh, vertices there may be more than one edge more than one edges as well as there may be self loops. Now, sometimes what happens is that we draw two graphs, but there may be a one to one on to mapping from the set of vertices of one graph to the set of vertices of the other such that the adjacency of the vertices are maintained. And in those cases, we say that the two graphs are isomorphic. Now, we go for the formal definition. It says that two graphs G and G dash are said. to be isomorphic well of course, to each other if there is a one to one correspondence between the set of vertices and the between the sets of vertices and the sets of uh, and the sets of edges so that the incidence relationship is preserved. Now, let us look at an example.
Now, we have drawn two graphs. Let us call this graph G and this graph G prime. Now, apparently they are different graphs, but I will now give a one to one on to correspondence from the set of vertices of G to the set of vertices of G prime and the one to one correspondence one to one on to correspondence uh, to uh, from the set, uh, set of edges of G to the set of edges of G prime and we can check that the incidence relationship is preserved or in another way the adjacencies are preserved that if two vertices are adjacent in G they will become adjacent in G prime and the corresponding edges also will be mapped to the corresponding edges. So, I will give the mapping. So, isomorphism of G to G prime. So, one side I write the one to one onto maps between the set of vertices, the other side the one to one mark and onto mark maps between the set of edges. So, between the set of vertices we have A mapped to V 1, B mapped to V 2, C map to V 3, D map to V 4 and E map to V 5 and among the set of edges 1 map to E 1, 2 map to E 2, 3 map to E 3, 4 map to E 4 and 5 map to E 5. Now, let us look at the first few uh, correspondences. So, A is mapped to V 1. So, that means, A is going over here and B is mapped to V 2. That means, that B is going to this point. Now, A and B are adjacent to each other in the graph G. Now, let us look what happens in graph G prime. Here we see that V 1 is adjacent to V 2 and what about the edge which is connecting A and B? The corresponding edge is 5 and here we see the corresponding edge is E 5 and according to our already defined correspondence we see that 5 maps to E 5. That means, according to this map A is going to V 1, B is going to V 2 and A B the edge A V that is labeled by 5 in the graph G is getting mapped to the edge E 5 and which is the edge between V 1 and V 2 and this should happen with each vertices each vertex and each edge. If it happens then we say that we have an isomorphism. It is needless to say that finding out isomorphisms between two graphs is a very difficult problem and we do not have complete answer to this. So, that means that if I am given two graphs in general, I do not have a quick or efficient way of deciding in general whether these two graphs are isomorphic or not, but we can always hope to get some partial results depending on certain properties of the graphs. Now, let us look at some partial results 
partial results on decision of isomorphism of graphs now what we will do here is that we will list down three rules or three conditions that two isomorphic graphs must have. We will of course, show, show later with an example that even if these conditions are satisfied, it does not mean that the graphs are isomorphic. What we can say is that if two graphs are not isomorphic, then uh, sorry what we can say that if these conditions are not satisfied by these two graphs any two graphs then they cannot be isomorphic i repeat again we will give three conditions now what we will claim and what is very evident is that if there are two graphs for which these conditions are not satisfied then they cannot be isomorphic. However, we will give examples and show that there are graphs which satisfy these properties and still they are not isomorphic. Now, let us look at the properties. Alright. So, if we have two isomorphic graphs then they must have same number of vertices and they must have the same number of edges. Three. an equal number of vertices with a given degree. Now, it is not difficult to directly see that these conditions are absolutely necessary for two graphs to be isomorphic. That means, that if two graphs are isomorphic of course, these things must happen. So, if these things do not happen then they are not isomorphic, but it is quite possible that these things do happen, but still the graphs are not isomorphic. Let me give an example. Now, we have a graph which we denote by g and another graph we denote by g prime. Now, uh, g has 6 vertices, g prime also has 6 vertices. Now, 
if you look at the uh, edges g has 4 edges g prime sorry g has 5 edges and g prime also has 5 edges now if we look at the degrees now there are uh, vertices with of degree 1 and in g there are 3 vertices of degree 1 in g prime there are 3 vertices of degree 1 and about degree 2 in g there are 2 vertices of degree 2 and in g prime there are 2 vertices of degree 2 and in g there is exactly 1 vertex with degree 1 sorry exactly 1 vertex with degree 3 and in g prime there is exactly 1 vertex with degree 3. Now, what we claim is that these two graphs are not isomorphic, so we have to show that they are not isomorphic. Although it is now clear that if we look at these three conditions g and g prime satisfy all these three conditions. Now, if we are trying to build an isomorphism, suppose we write g as v comma e and g prime as v prime comma e prime, we have to develop a one to one correspondence between v and v prime. Now, it is obvious that the vertices of the same degree will be mapped to vertices of the same degree because uh, otherwise it is not possible to preserve the adjacency or in incidence relationship. So, the vertex x, the vertex x has to be mapped to the vertex y because x is the only one vertex of degree 3 in V and Y is the only one vertex of degree 3 in V prime. Now, if we look at this region and this region, we see that from x, two vertices are connected which are of degree 1, but from y only one vertex is connected which is of degree 1. Therefore, there is a structural difference between these two graphs. If we think a little more, we will see that no matter how we arrange our permutations or so to say the mapping between v and v dash, I will never be able to uh, map all the vertices in such a way that the incidence relationship is preserved. That the reason is that as I as I said that this there are two vertices of degree 1 getting connected to the degree 3 vertex and here there is only one vertex of degree 1 getting connected to the degree 3 vertex. Therefore, g and g dash are not g and g prime are not isomorphic.
although the satisfy they satisfy the three conditions given above although they satisfy the three conditions given above. Next, we move on to subgraphs. If we have a graph, let us denote it by g equal to v comma e, we can always think of a subset of v, well let us call it v prime which is a subset of v and we can consider a subset of E such that the end points of the that subset let us name it E prime belongs to V prime such that the end points slash end vertices of the elements in E prime are in V prime. Then the resulting graph which is in some way a smaller graph than G getting derived from G is called a subgraph of G. Let me write the definition more systematically. A graph G prime is said to be a subgraph. of a graph G if all the edges of G prime are in G and each edge of G prime has the same end points or end vertices in G prime as in G. So, this is uh, in a, a, a formal way of defining a subgraph, but we can always remember what I have told in the beginning that a subgraph will have lesser possibly a lesser number of vertices and edges will pick up the edges from the set of edges of G which has got endpoints in that subset of vertices. Now, we have got some observations related to a subgraph. One, every graph is its own subgraph. One, 
well this is of course obvious then 2 a subgraph of a subgraph of a graph G is a subgraph of G. This two is something that goes without saying and third a single vertex in a graph G is a subgraph of G that is also direct from the definition and for a single edge in G together with its end points is also a subgraph of G. We see that these are more or less straightforward. Now, we will move on to certain special types of subgraphs which are important in uh, several applications of graph theory. Now, we come to edge disjoint subgraphs. Edge disjoint subgraphs two or more subgraphs G one G two of a graph G are said to be edge disjoint if G one and G two have no edge in common. Now, let us look at an example. Suppose we have a graph like this so let us label the vertices. v 1, v 2, v 3, v 4 and v 5 and label the edges e 1, e 2, e 3, e 4, e 5 and e 6. So, let us call this graph as G. Now, let us look at a subgraph of this type. v 3, E4, no, it's not E4 over here. So V3, this is the vertex V3. E3 is over here. E1 is over here. 
v 1, e 2 and v 2 and another subgraph v 3, v 4, uh, here this is v 5. So, this is v 5 like this and we have e 4, e 5 and e 6. Now, suppose I write g 1 as v 1, v 2, v 3 and e 1, e 3, e 2 and g 2 as v 3, v 4, v 5 and e 4, e 5 and e 6. Then g 1 and g 2 are edge disjoint subgraphs. See that this is the set of edges for g 1 and this is the set of edges for g 2 and there is no common edge, but it does not mean that they do not have common vertices. We see that the vertex v 3 appears in both the sets of vertices of the subgraphs. Now, we come to vertex disjoint subgraphs. two edge disjoint subgraphs are said to be vertex disjoint if they do not have any common vertex. Now, let us uh, look at an example of a subgraph of a graph. Let us consider this graph where the vertices are labeled by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the edges are labeled as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
Now, let us consider another graph. Now, this is of course, a subgraph of the original graph. So, let us name it g and let us name it g prime. g prime is clearly a subgraph of g. Before I end today's lecture, I will introduce few more terminologies. One is an isolated vertex. A vertex of degree 0 is said to be an isolated vertex. Then a pendant vertex a pendant vertex and a null graph. A graph with no edge is said to be a null graph. Now, for isolated vertex, an example may be like this. Suppose I have a graph over here, a vertex like this. So, suppose this is a v1, v2, v3, v4, and a vertex is over here, which is called let us say v5. This v5 is will called an isolated vertex. and a pendant vertex will be a vertex which has got only one degree. So, possibly like this v 1, v 2, v 3, v 4 and v 5. This is a pendant vertex and a null graph will be graphs of this type which has got only vertices but the set of edges is a null set. And then there is an idea of regular graphs a graph in which each vertex has 
same degree is called a regular graph. And if this degree is let us say d, then it will be called a d regular graph. Now, we think of again the isomorphism problem, here we will see that it is, ve it will, it is ve uh, very difficult to solve the isomorphism problem for two d regular graphs whatever be the value of d which has the same number of vertices and the same number of edges. With this I end today's talk. Thank you.